I welcome our esteemed speakers, our chief guests, and all the participants. I welcome you all to this post lunch session, that is technical session number four. Since the morning we had our inaugural session, then uh, in the inaugural session we had Professor Noni Gopal Mohanta, education advisor to the government of Assam. Then Srimati Rumi Kumari Pukon, who is the former judge of Gohati High Court. And we had the presidential address by our Vice Chancellor Sir, Professor Rajendra Prasad Das. And vote of thanks was delivered by Dr. Arubhuti Shorthi, our registrar. In the technical session one, we had Mr. Ashim Chamwa, who is an advocate of Gohati High Court. And speaker Arunita Patha, who is the state coordinator of Northeast Network, Gohati. And uh, in the third technical session, we had our additional SP, Papori Chetia ma'am, and when she talked about the role of police in delivering justice to women. In this session, that is technical session number four, we have with us, we are honored to have Bandita Acharya, who is the convener, Women in Governance in India and Director of Purva Bharati Education Trust, Jorha. Her topic, of delivery will be law, legal aids for the poor, contextualizing the issues of the victims with regard to social justice. I would like to request ma'am to kindly come and take the seat on the dais. So let me introduce our honorable speaker now. Vandita Acharya is a renowned gender rights activist from Assam. She is the director of Purva Bharti Educational Trust, a feminist organization based in Jorhat. She has vast grassroots experience of working on the issues of women leadership, climate change and gender, women security, human rights. In 2019, she was selected as the education champion by Manala Khan to work on quality and inclusive education for girls in the tea garden of Assam. She was part of several fact-finding missions to document the cases of sexual violence, human rights and violations, cases of witch hunting and also to document the conflict situation in Assam. She has been engaging with the United Nations mechanisms since 2010 in Geneva, New York and Bangkok. She was part of the Indian CSO delegation during EU lobby process in 2011. Universal Periodic Review of India in 2012 and even counter terrorism mechanisms that is CTM review by New York in June 2012. Also, the Human Rights Council session in Geneva, then Commission on Status of Women in March 2013, and also has been working in open working group on sustainable development goals in New York since in 2014. She was also in, uh, in uh, Geneva in July 2014, then review in Bangkok in November 2014. She was a fellow of the, at the Center of Applied Human Rights, University of York, under the scheme of human rights defenders at risk from September 2015. Vandita Acharya is also a member of the steering committee of women in governance, this is WING India a network of human rights defender and advisor to urgent action fund for South Asia. I welcome you, you ma'am to our university and hoping to have a delightful uh, talk from you. Uh, I would like to request Dr. Indrani Deka to felicitate you. Good afternoon and uh, after the lunch, it is very difficult to listen to these technical sessions, but uh, I will try to be uh, brief and make it interesting. I don't know how can I make this interesting. Uh, I thank you, KK, Krishnabhada, and the Open University and the Women Commission to invite me as a speaker. Uh, to talk on the law and legal aids for the marginalized. I don't want to use the word poor here. And contextualizing the issues of victims with regard to social justice. So since morning we have uh, listened to the policy makers. We have listened to the uh, person from judiciary. 
or you have listened to uh, the person from police and other uh, uh, like feminist activists from Assam. But now here now I am representing the survivors of violence because um, uh, as a government educational trust or women in governance, we have been working with the survivors since 2009 and I want to talk about their issues while uh, what they face while uh, they are fighting for justice. Uh, the women who I am representing here, the survivors, they don't understand what is this whole about the first trade code. They don't understand how this legal system functions. The only thing they understand is they want justice. If they face any violence, whether it is at home, it is at in the society, it is at the, in the workplace, or anywhere where they go in public places, in the in buses where they face violence, they need justice. These are very technical tasks. The first trade code, and then uh, even the, these women they don't know how to write it as a heart. How to make a first complaint? Like Anurita was here in the morning. I am here. We are representing two organizations in Assam, but there are several women facing lots of violence in Assam. We few organizations cannot address this issue. So we need to have a system. That system, which is which has to be set up by the government of Assam. We have listened to the girls. There are less number of police officers in the Thana. There are seven judicial officers. There are less number of judges. Rightly, Honorita said, why the women should suffer? Women, women's justice, women's security should be at the focus. So here I am going to cite some examples of cases where women are still fighting. The cases are old cases, but still they are fighting for the legal justice. I am citing an example because we have been talking about there are uh, cases of rape, sexual assaults. We, we have been talking about the heinous crime. We all know what happened uh, in 2012 in Delhi, that whole that issue of that gang rape case in Delhi. What, we call it the Nibhaya Yang Red case. Before that, there was an incident in Guwahati, the GS Road incident. I think when uh, the whole women movement started uh, talking about this amendment of the criminal acts or from the GS uh, Road case itself, the definition of rape, definition of molestation has to be changed. I am citing an example of Jorhat. Our organization is based in Jorhat. Uh, we have been dealing with 4, 528 cases. That is, a one organization is dealing with 528 cases. Uh, since uh, 2020 till date, we are dealing with 136 cases. And these 136 cases, even most of them came during the COVID time. The statistics, what we saw, that was registered case in the NCRB data or police. But there are several cases comes to us that has been in our record. So you can just understand the magnitude of the issue. In 2016, one lady, uh, she came to us uh, from Jorhar, from Tiok area, to complain a case of a domestic violence. And she was along with her daughters, two daughters, and her daughter, actually the elder daughter, uh, she was very frightened. Uh, she didn't want to stay at her home. Most of the time she wanted to go to stay at her natural uncle's place. If she doesn't stay at home, her father used to be his wife. He has two wives, uh, the, both the wives and the child. So that day also she came in the month of July. 
she came with the daughters. She come, uh, she uh, came to our volunteers' house, and she was explaining it to the case of domestic violence. She was being beaten up by her husband to her and her daughter. And at that point of time, her his second wife also came. Then he, then she told us that she like her and the daughter told her she was being sexually harassed, assaulted, raped by her own father. So that was the case. Case came to us as a domestic violence. Then it turned to be a case of rape, and that is also by her own biological father. So we immediately informed the police. Police arrested him, and then we talk about the first rape court. So the incident happened in 2016 in the month of July, and in session court. In Jorhat 2017, in the month of May, they found him guilty, convicted him for a seven years of imprisonment. Very fast, everything happened. Soon after that, he was arrested. He was in Jorhat jail, but he appealed to Guwahati High Court for the judgment. Surprisingly. We really need to understand how this whole case, the case of a rape, which was being reported by 14-year-old daughter against her father, but how this Guwahati High Court, uh, like, checked the facts, and this is very interesting to understand that. Guwahati High Court said, in 2018, this case came to Guwahati High Court, and Guwahati High Court Released that accused in the uh, in the during the COVID time. I think it is the month of May in 2020. In the Guwahati High Court, when we check all the facts and figures, we found the Guwahati High Court judgment said the incident happened two months prior to the filing of the FIR. That is the one point they had uh, put. Secondly. Though they say, though the victim one, victim one is the, uh, the daughter, victim, uh, that, uh, that witness one is the daughter, witness one, second was the mother of the daughter, witness four was the stepmother. The high court say, though the statement of all three were corroborated with each other, that come from, like, from one, right from the one sixty for statement to the statement given in during the trial, they all are, that was it, uh, it was like they didn't change their statements. But the High Court say the witness second and witness four were not present at the time of incident. Just can you imagine? That rape, anyone that heard about this rape happens in like in front of everyone, it happens in isolation. That is also the father raped his own daughter. Based on these two things, one was the case was registered two months after the incident, and also the two witnesses were not present at that point of time. So they they release the accused and also say it will not, that also will not applicable to this case. So this is how our legal system functions. So what happened? And we saw this, but the session for judgment in Jorhat, there was a very good judgment. They have cited three previous cases where they say the victim statement, though she was a minor girl, but her statement, then we should not consider the quantity. Quality of statement is important. So they considered victim statement. And there was a previous case in prison, there was a previous case, case in judgment where in the Poxo case, 
the victim statement was taken into consideration, but High Court didn't take that into consideration while releasing the uh, accused. Even in session court, they say that it's a 14-year-old child complaining against her own father. Can you imagine any daughter will do that? Any daughter will make any false complaint against his own, uh, her own father? But the high court didn't consider that. And after that, what happened? He, he got released in, uh, during the COVID time in 2020. He came back home. Even that was not informed to the complainants that the, today in the morning we listen to that. Even the bail is being granted that the complainants should be informed. But here, in this case, the complainants were not informed about this release. So he came back home, he started brutally petting his wife, his children, both the daughters and wanted to kill them with a dog. Somehow they managed to escape. The daughter, he, she was just barely 18 years of age, the elder daughter, she eloped with her lover and the lady with her uh, younger daughter and the second wife came to us during the COVID time in the month of September. We just started our offices, came to us. We complained the police, but immediately police didn't take any action, so he ran away. So then there was a fear for their lives. What we can do during the COVID time, as Anubita said, during the COVID time, women cases were not considered important cases. Police station, they didn't register many of the cases that when women went there to file complaints. So we found a safe place for them in Jorha. So we kept her and we tried to uh, like uh, find and locate that, uh, that man through our different contacts. We are trying to help police to find that. To different contacts, uh, we talk to different people, even that uh, her family and everyone tried to get where he is uh, located at that point of time. And we found him in one village and that then he was in a family to many another women. The case was told to that family and that uh, uncle of that, uh, that third lady, then he told him, you surrender before the police and then we will uh, takes action to take you out from the jail. <coughs> he surrendered and he got arrested and he was in jail. Now, last week, he again got the bail. Uh, we didn't disclose their uh, like location. He doesn't know where his wife and daughter is living now second daughter. He doesn't know where his first daughter is living now. So he went home then started meeting his own parents. These parents who didn't support her in the second case and the first case. But now, they, now he went home and started meeting his parents. Then again now the family village did his party and everyone filed a complaint in the in this is just last week, it, it happened last week. Uh, he was taken by the police after putting so much of pressure through 181. 181 is another headline number for women, uh, what women headline number. And also, we also talked to police and all, and he was taken. Then police released him again and said, We will, we are giving him a chance. Uh, if he do something again, I it is very difficult to say this kind of thing that police uh, person in a public place. But we really need to understand how the victims faces the struggle. That is a police person. They say if he does anything, 
we might arrest or encounter and they send him back so now till 2016 and today is uh, october 2022 that family that his wife his both the daughters are still living in fear and i have come to know uh, because we then we did file a complaint to sp jorhat sp jorhat immediately informed the job police station to arrest him but till today he has not been arrested but in this case in the first case justice was delivered as per the law he was being convicted he was put in jail for 7 years though it, it, it can be considered as a heinous crime it's a father the home should be safe for girls daughters but their homes were not safe for them but the jorha court session court convicted him and punished him for 7 years rigorous imprisonment but after that what happened the, in that Guwahati High Court. What happened? The Guwahati High Court didn't look into the all the facts. They didn't look. They didn't consider the case with a general lens, the sensitivity. They didn't look into the case. They just checked the case on facts and figure. The case can be registered after two months of the incident. What happened to me to Mukpen? Many women complain uh, after one year, two years, thirty years, forty years before. Like the case happened before forty years, but in during the meet time they have been raised, and these are the cases raised by the women who have been who are educated. Just imagine, even at that point of time, they could not raise their voice, and how can? We expect a 14-year-old girl can talk about the case of being raped by her own father to the family because he was being threatened by her own father. That is a one case. Now going to another case, second case. There is an adult couple. Both of them are above 18 years of age. I. They, during some uh, festival time, I don't remember exactly during the some puja puja time. I don't remember it was during the Saraswati puja time or the Durga puja time. The both adult couple went to a hotel and they were in in the hotel room. All of a sudden, police raided their hotel. In that is of this one also in Jorha. They raided their hotel. They found the couple. They arrested the couple under immoral trafficking act, and that case was registered by Jorhat police against that couple. They were in relationship for three years. Their adult couple. They have consensual relationship. There was no any kind of sexual exploitation happening, and and there is nothing or there is something uh, that. That uh, that uh, some for commercial purpose, nothing was happening, and the police registered the case against the girl and the boy under Immoral Trafficking Act. She was in the jail for one month. She then court first rejected her bail because the investigating officer could not give the Case diary on time, so season was first rejected the bail. Then so much was served to the investigating officer, and after that she got bail from the Jorhat Session Court. We have uh, the police officer here, but in this case, when the couple they are adult. And they are they are not in that kind of a relationship. That they are that that that, uh, that sexual relationship was not happening between both of them for the commercial purpose at all. But can the police put the section under immoral trafficking act? So we really need to question 
on those things. And after that, what happened? She got bail. The girl got married after six months of the bail. Then her husband came to know about the case. She has been now thrown out from the house. Now she is in the at her own mother's place. So in this case also, now the trial has not yet been started, and we are talking about the first report. Now I am going to talk about the another incident of a human trafficking. That is also again in Jorhat. I am citing all the cases from Jorhat because I am from Jorhat and we are doing the uh, cases mostly from Jorhat. One morning we got a call from a newspaper reporter. He called us. Then he saw a girl roaming around. The girl from the Adivasi community roaming around in different places in Jorhat informed us and also informed the police. So police immediately went there and took the girl back to her to the police station. By that time our volunteers also reached the police station. Then we found that girl was from Udalpuri district. She cannot speak Assam as well. She doesn't understand Assam as well. So when we asked our colleague to talk with her in Sadri language, then we found some agent, even she mentioned the name of the agent, some agent told her that he will take her to some officer to get her Adhokar done. And that's why he believed that as it was also from her own village. She she believed. So he came with that as it that as it took her to Jorha and put her to work as a domestic help in a very renowned child specialist house in Jorha. She was harassed mentally, like Gali Galashku Parisina type. So she ran away. And she told us the whole thing. And uh, again, in this case, traffickers' name was known, but no investigation started on that. So no action has been taken. Even the doctor was also in not question because she, she was a not only one, other two or three girls were there in his house at that point of time. And then she organizations we all went to the SP office and then filed a memorandum to SP to take a speedy action especially on the traffic of who brought her to the uh, to that place and all but surprisingly we could we still could not understand why the police was so keen to prove her age 18 year old they were trying to save the doctor. They were ignoring the, the main facts of the case that that was a case of a trafficking. That case happened in the month of May, on 4th of May. We uh, went to the police the SP office in the month uh, on 6th of May. On 5th of May, police, Jorha police managed a school naming certificate from a middle school in Udalpuri district where it was written that her age was 18 years old and that school naming certificate itself was signed on the 5th of May. I don't know what to do in this kind of, yeah, in this system and uh, we are talking about the first trade court and all. But this is all happening. Then, and then in Jorhat, as she was being proved 18 year old, so child life, CWC didn't do anything, they didn't take this case. We moved to the CWC in Udalapuri district because we came to know from the villagers, we came to know from her family, she was 15 year old, but CWC in Udalapuri uh, said she was 15 year old. And then they told the family to bring her there so that they can put her in a surgeon home. So, 
According to the family, according to the villagers, he was 15 years old, but the Johar police got the certificate, that it was a middle school certificate, to prove that he is 18 years old. No investigation, nothing has been done in this case till today. No investigation has started for the trafficker. From her we came to know that trafficker was that day on the way to Delhi with another three, four girls. Someone from the village called the trafficker. He said, I am about to reach Delhi. But police didn't take any action. No investigation started. That is the one trafficking case. Under the trafficking case, one of our volunteers, she came to know about a girl. She was, uh, uh, she was locked with her boyfriend. She was, uh, I think she was a 14 or 15 year old girl. Uh, that uh, that boy told her that he, he will take her to some place so that they can stay together. But then she, she was not aware of anything, but he took her to the Guwahati railway station along with two men. They were taken in the, in the train to some places. She was not aware of that. When the family came to know, they informed us. We informed the Monterey police that it was comes under the Monterey uh, police station, but we could not get any kind of immediate uh, support from the Jorhat police, Monterey police. So my colleague wrote in a Facebook about this incident. So he, that post went viral, like everyone shared that post. Luckily, one police officer of Buhai called us to give us detail about the girl. And then she was being rescued from Koch Bihar by Koch Railway Police. So that's how we have to do. Like we have a system. We are very few organizations. We are very few people working on this. But that's how we have to do. The system. When the system is failed, then how can we expect expect the justice for the survivors? But shockingly, when the girl gave her statement before the CWC. She told two police officers came in a train with her in, the, in, in, that, in that mobile of that police officer showing her photographs. Asking, are you the same girl? She said, yes. That other, the police officer asked the other person, who is she? The other guy said, my sister. Then the police officer and that boys negotiated with the 1500 rupees and left them go. Police didn't arrest. That was, that happened before Gosaiba. But when this whole post went viral, then we informed, we talked to all the police stations and the railway police. Finally, in Koch Bihar railway police rescued her. So that was the revelation by the girl, not by us. So, that, again I am citing another example of the domestic violence because we have been talking about a domestic violence case. Uh, that came to us during the COVID time and we all know during the COVID time many women faces domestic violence and she complained about uh, that she was being physically and mentally harassed by her husband and her uh, family in-laws and all. So she asked us and we uh, told her to contact to the one-stop center because that one-stop center is the one instead as it seems they should provide support to the survivors of violence and she wanted a safe residence order but at that point of time she could not stay at her uh, in-laws place so she moved to her parents place so the officer from one stop center said as you, your address is now changed so we cannot ask for a residence address and that time she Okay. So at that time she felt that if he stays at her parents' house, then she will not get her rights at her in-laws place, so she will move there. Again, in the same year she was being tortured, she was trying to uh, sexually assault by her brother-in-law and she made all the videos and went to the police station. But 
That case was not registered by the police station, so we took her to the ADC, additional uh, deputy commissioner, who is responsible for law and order. Through him, we uh, sent an application to the deputy commissioner, and the deputy commissioner asked the SP to take action. But still, the trial has not been started for this case. But in the whole process, that women become empowered. The survivors become empowered. Because she has learned where to go, what to do, whom to approach. So she joined us now and now she is helping other survivors. She is fighting for her own rights as well as now she is also supporting other survivors through us. So now she has joined us as a supervisor and she is doing. So when we deal with different survivors or different cases, during the cases, during the process, even the survivors become empowered. So this is one case I wanted to share because now all this for all these four cases, apart from the first case, but again the uh, we find another two cases for the first victim, but all these cases, for all these cases, trial has not yet been started. So this is the ground reality. Our previous speakers say very rightfully that we cannot talk about the cases in the ACU, but I am bringing the cases from the ground to the AC room. That's people, the digital members sitting in the AC room, those who are responsible, accountable to provide security, safety to women now need to think about me that how we can deliver justice to the survivors of violence. Thank you so much.